first words. What is Fronton? What does it mean? And how does, what does it do to you? Fronton's an amazing bodybuilding wave. Um, it's a complete dream come true that we've got a, an event here, world, a world tour event here. And to be the, the last event on the world tour to decide the world title is probably the best case scenario of, of probably all the breaks in the world, I think. Well, you're in the mix. There are four riders, Guilherme Tamega, Pierre-Louis Costa, Jeff Hubbard, and yourself going for that title, world title shot of 2011. Mm -hmm. Pressure, uh, what's going through your mind? Um, well, we've got live action now. This is uh, Gloomy Tamago, one of the contenders, just getting his opening ride. He loves to get it, loves, loves to get busy early and get a, a score straight up on the board and gets, get, you know, get out there really fast. Um, very experienced competitor. Yeah. So back to the question. Don't, don't, don't try to uh, avoid the question. I want to know what does it feel like to be in contention. I know there's a lot of things that come into play for you to be a world champion, but as of right now, what, what's going through your mind? Um, uh, it's. Oh, it's pretty, it was pretty hectic. It's really yeah. intense. Uh, I've been up since 3.30 this morning, partly because of jet lag, partly because there's just uh, you know, so much going on in my mind and nerves <laughs> and anxiety and, and just completely amped. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's incredible. It's a pretty a hard thing to explain, but it, overall it's really exciting, really intense, and there's nowhere, nowhere else I'd rather be in the world than in a world title race. It's, uh, it's the ultimate as a sports and uh, a competitor in bodyboarding. Awesome. Well, congratulations to be a part of that. Uh, your thoughts on the Canary Islands? Uh, Canary Islands is a great, a great place. I love coming here. It's a, a bodyboarding capital. It's one of the strongest bodyboarding nations in the world where bodyboarding is the dominant water sport in this country. Uh, a lot of great bodyboarding waves. Uh, the people are uh, it's really friendly and, and also great bodyboarders. One of the probably stronger nations in the world for bodyboarding. Uh, yeah, I've had a great time, every time I come here. Food's nice, yeah. Um, love the, the Spanish style. Love uh, the coast here. Yeah, it's a great place, yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so the guys out in the water making their way in from heat number one, round number two. You're coming up soon against uh, Mike Stewart, Mitch Rollins, and Hugo Pinedo in heat number six. So that's coming up soon. What do you do to prepare for, for any heat, for a competition? Uh, well, the preparation is just making sure your equipment's uh, ready. You know, I've got uh, two boards and a, a spare set of fins. Um, you know, I want to G up my mates uh, to have a spare set of fins ready, like we saw with Dallas Singer yes. earlier. want to have a spare board, board there ready in case, you know, a board somehow uh, snaps or becomes unrideable. I uh, want to be feeling warm for the heat, so, you know, a little jog down the cliff and a little bit of a stretch up before the, before the heat begins. Yeah, and just mentally... Um, yeah, just want to be feeling uh, happy with, with where I'm at in the day. So just hanging out with my mates for the heat cool. and ready to, to get in the water and, and go for it. All right, cool. All right, Hardy, take a look at this. We're a little quick replay of what we just missed. It was Gastel and Trudeau in the yellow jersey from Portugal with a big back lip right there. So out in the water right now, Gastel and Trudeau dropping a 6.0. Guilherme Tamega on his first ride, a 5.0. Airam Cabrera in the blue jersey from the... Canary Islands in 4.4, I mean 4.04, and he's in third place. Edo Luciano up and riding. Here's Edo now, taking off late and coming around the barrel, going for the big move. The oh. Big air roller. That's so a good section there. He didn't, it, he didn't go for, you know, it's his first wave. He didn't go for the, the big backflip that he's known for or a big invert, but it'll, it'll still be a good score nonetheless. What do, um, I'm, I'm trying to think back really quick what you placed yesterday. In your first heat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, pulled a first yesterday. It was, That's it was right. a pretty slow heat, but there was a couple of bowls that I managed to um, to sneak up to, to get so. on my account. So it's All right, so we know we ha we we're really stoked to have NND Pride and Stealth as uh, as sponsors of this event. Stealth, talk to us. Yeah, uh, Stealth uh, just came came on board and um, are making a new fin. Uh, that are that are quite similar to Churchill, but just with their materials and their and their design and look and and yeah now so now I'm on board riding the new Stealth fins. Awesome. Yeah. And the foot pocket, how's the comfort? Give us some details. Yeah, well ba basically the, the fins are a little uh, stiffer than the Churchill, which is it just gives you a little extra kick in the water. Uh, the pockets, the pocket and the and the, the softness of the material is all uh, quite comfortable. And yeah, it's just it's it's a good fin, and I'm stoked about it. Cool. All right, well, congratulations on your new sponsor, Stealth. 
Uh, Ryan Hardy is now equipped and will be ready to rock and roll against Stuart, Mitch Rollins, and Hugo Pinedo coming up in heat number six. Out in the water, heat number two. Give us the lowdown on where we are currently with 24 minutes to go. Well, it's a pretty close close battle at the moment. Only five minutes gone, and each rider's got a, a reasonable wave to start with, ranging from a four to a six. Gastel's just got got a slight lead uh, with a six-point wave over Edder's 5.75. And Tamika's five points, so uh, there's a lot of time left, and I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of changing going around this heat. With yeah, everyone's now got a, their first wave locked in, and quite soon they're going to be getting their second and then their third. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting to heat to watch from here. And all all competitors are quite quite capable, and then you got Tamika there that's a, a world title contender, so he's going to be definitely shooting for a first or second to qualify him into the into the man on man rounds. All right, taking a look out the back, it is Eder Luciano from Brazil. Comes around the section, just does a nice conservative roll out of that, mm -hmm. out of that wave, and out the back he goes. So quick yeah, in and out for Eder Luciano. So that was Eder just using. He was in fourth priority there, so he was just uh, trying to get a, a, just a second score, just to put himself in the lead. A little bit of a mental advantage, and and it's only a, a, a small area this reef, so it's it's quite a smart move to use that last priority just to pick off a little wave and get a little score and get a bit of momentum happening. He's got a 3.25 for that roll, so now he's in the lead, and now he can afford to just wait for a set and, and improve his situation from there. Check this out. Omri Laverne doing what he does best, and that's intimidation. He's not stretching. <laughs> he's intimidating his yeah. fellow competitors. Omri Laverne from Reunion Island. He's just getting ready. He'll be coming up next against Diego Cabrera, Joe Clark, and Nelson Moir. Look at this. Out the back, it is Iram Cabrera putting together the first combination moves. That uh, One of the first combination moves that we've seen all day with three, two rolls three and rolls, man, three rolls yep, yep. on the left. One of the first lefts we've seen today, and that's a sign that the tide's coming up and that uh, yeah, there's enough water on the reef that's not just mutating and, and closing out. It's starting, to, it's starting to open up a bit on the left, so we'll see some more lefts ridden throughout the day. Looks like the sun is starting to peak out too as well. The, wind, the, the lefts, it wasn't a, a big wave, but you actually put together a nice combination and it came down at a 4.5. I'm guessing because of the size of the wave. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So now we've got Ed Aaron Aram in the lead. Un under the 10 point mark, so it's a fairly low lead at this stage. So it definitely won't be surprising to see uh, Galumi or Gasto, Gastel uh, pushing into the lead within the next five to 10 minutes with the wa having priority now. Yep. So after this event, the last tour stop in 2011, it's done. It's everybody's finished competing different mindset what do you do on the off season uh, I'm really, really looking forward to just going home having Christmas with, uh, with my family and friends uh, and just yeah just really chilling out in, in Margaret River and just not thinking about bodyboard, bodyboarding competition at all yeah, yeah. But, but still surfing a lot I like to, um, to surf a lot and stand up at home just relax and sort of uh, forget about bodyboarding for a while um, just to recharge yeah recharge yeah. look at this yeah. up and riding Guillermo Tamega in the red jersey Bottom turns, does an invert through the lip, lands. His landings look harsh, but he's so fit, physically fit, that he makes it look easy riding out of that. So, Guillermo Tamega, ride number two, and out the back, it is Gastel and Trudeau. So, this was Gastel and Galumi using up their priority. Gastel doing a roll in the outside section. Not a great scoring wave, but we'll post a second score and, and put him in a better position for the heat. All right, out the back, Eder Luciano looking at sizing up this session, goes for there another goes. big flip, AR, ARS, big move right there from Eder Luciano. That's, that's what we're more used to seeing from Eder, it's just the big, the big uh, back flip, he's really got them down, he can pull them, pull them out at any, at any stop, and that's Let's most likely going to put him in the lead for this heat. All right, we're going to take a look at some of the replays that we just saw, Guilherme Tamega going for the invert air through the lip right there, lands it, pulls it off and kicks out in front of the whitewash. Again, the waves are actually a little bigger than what they look on screen. And look at this, Gastel and Trudeau coming around the section. So that wave just shut down a bit on Gastel there. It did open up a little on the end here, but just a, a weak section, didn't wrap much. Live and action right here. This is Aram Cabrera. He wants to be part of the wave exchange, and that's all she wrote for Aram. It was only a smaller wave, but he did, he did uh, throw up the level with the degree of difficulty there by throwing a flip. So it'll, it'll give him a decent little score, but he's definitely going to want to get back out there and, and wait for a bigger wave and a bigger section because now, now everyone's locked in two uh, reasonable scores. This heat's starting to turn up, and, and guys are going to be wanting posting scores that are higher than five and six. 
Rounds number one, two, and three. These are 30 minute heats. Top two waves will be scored. And at the end of each of these three heats in the leaderboard rounds, they will be awarded points for their placings. First place will get six. Second place will get four. Third place will get two. And fourth place will get one point. At the end of three rounds, those points will be added. Top 16 advance on to round number four. So here we go, scores are dropping. We have uh, Edda in the lead with, oh, it's, it's quite close now between Iran, Galumi and Edda, only a, a difference of, of just under two points. We've got live action out the back now, Galumi pulling into a nice barrel out the back. So a spit and a little oh roll man. out. Yeah, so Galumi to Mega, beautiful bottom turn. Yeah, that was a nice scoop into that one, yeah. Yeah, he definitely knows he's comfortable around the barrel. And he's comfortable in competition, and he knows now he's in a pretty nice place. And now he's going to definitely be waiting to, um, to better, his, better his scores. There's another look of Gas Down through those last wave that we just saw. It wasn't a high scoring wave. He did get a 4.1 on this maneuver right here and that nice ride. So not a high scoring wave, but it is his second wave out the back. Oh, that was big, big move right there from Ender Luciano. This was actually the, his last wave. Came in at a 5.6. And we also saw Aidam Cabrera, his last wave, came in at a 4.55. And Galerme Tamega, his last wave, 5.95. So Galerme Tamega now in the lead. Look at this view. I love this view of the pan. I mean, the just wide shot of it, man. You can just see the, the triangle shape of the reef, this lefts and rights. This, it's an amazing rock platform. Look at this section. Yes, Castellan yeah. Trudeau going nice for sweep. a big move right there can he pull it off looks like he may have caught a rail and could not pull that around so gastel in the yellow jersey from portugal now time is winding down we're about 17 minutes in these 30 minute heats a lot of time that's right man yeah yeah um as i saw dallas in the last year you might have spent 15 minutes paddling and and trying to trying to get a flipper because he lost his flipper early but he still he still had the, the possibility of making the heat because there's 10 minutes left and he had a score 30 minutes is a good amount of time to, to you know, be, be waiting still 15 minutes for a wave, maybe 20 minutes, and still be able to, to get a good score and win a heat. Wow, look at that. Looks like Jurassic Park out there with the birds and everything. <laughs> Amazing. So, yes, look at the perfect reef. I mean, it's, it's heavy. It's a heavy wave. Uh, I was out there a couple days ago in the morning, and uh, – Big wave comes in, you don't have anywhere to hide. It's the wave and the reef, and there's no nowhere to go. You just gotta, you just gotta take the whitewash, and it, it's gonna, it's gonna work you. That's right, man. Yeah. So you don't want to get cleaned up in your heat. No, <laughs> you're gonna no. lose a lot of energy just battling the whitewash. You only need to wipe out on your wave that you're riding, and then get caught by the next one, and you're you're in the the rock the rock area at the bottom of the screen there. Yeah. And then that's gonna be a long paddle back out, especially with the. Um, the wind coming from the side, as you can see, and the, and the sweep. There's a bit of sweep running from the right to the left. Yep. And yeah, you got you got to be fit to um, to surf these 30 minute heats and and catch the waves you need. How many times have you been out here to and ride front on? Uh, I've been to Canaries about four times now. Okay. Four, four separate trips. Uh, so that's you, you need you need a, a few diff a few seasons out here to be become a little bit familiar with the reef. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, it's it's the locals that have definitely got this place wide. They've surfed it in every condition: small, medium, big, high tide, low tide. They know where to come in on the rocks. They know which hit sections to hit. So having a having a local advantage out here and a knowledge of the reef is definitely going to help your uh, you know, your performance out here and your your overall result. All right, so we got 15 minutes and 45 seconds remaining, and I agree, the locals have an upper hand out here. But again, wave selection and competition. Uh, you, I, I mean, you don't get a, a ton of competitions out here, so a lot of the competitions is uh, probably that other part of the, the the recipe that a lot of the locals are starting to tune in on. Yere Martinez, uh, he's finally tuning in to the whole contest aspect as well as the big wave riding aspect, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully that'll work for him in a heat coming up next. Yeah, you, we will see him later down. Eddie Look at this. Dropping in on the outside. Nice barreling section. Oh, He's my. In very pretty. Woo-hoo-hoo. That thing clean. stayed open. Yeah, that'll <laughs> be a nice score for Eddie. Probably the best barrel of the trip so far. A little spray in the face to our cameraman, Seamus. <laughs> and he was only looking for a 5.71. I dare say he would have got it on that. Wow. Um, that thing stayed wide open. Yeah, that was a really nice clean barrel, which on a kind of semi-messy day like today is something that the, the judges will 
for sure reward. Yeah. We only saw two of those yesterday. I think uh, Elliot Morales and uh, another person actually got a similar barrel ride just like be, this. Yeah, you could be mistaken for thinking it's you know, almost perfectly glassy with a light offshore. Look at that. <laughs> exactly. But it is, it is windy out there, a little choppy, but sometimes these little rare jams come through onto the reef, and lucky for Eder Luciano, he got one of them. That's right, and he got a 7.0 for that wave, which puts him into the lead. And now Galumi needs a 6.81, Gastel needs a 6.76 for first, and Iran needs an 8.2. All So everyone's within striking distance, and it's only still three points between fourth and first. Well, Eder Luciano in his first round heat ended up in second place, so he, right now, he has four points in his pocket. If he pulls off a win here, that'll put him into 10 points. And Galemi Tamega, he knows what he has to do. Look at that big move out the back as well. It was. I think it was, it was a smaller wave, and he's already got a 5 and a 5-5 a five five and a 5-9-5. Five five, so I doubt that that's going to better that. So he's going to be straight back out the back. Adam Cabrera, the local rider in the blue jersey, sneaks under the pocket, comes out of the barrel. Nice tube ride right there. A little smaller wave as well, but nice barrel ride. Again, yeah, so these guys are kind of feeling the pressure. You know, Edur's had a couple of good waves now, and they, they just really want to just catch anything that's got a bit of a bowl and, and work it. But when they're smaller and they're having weak, weak sections like that, then there's not much they can do. So they just got to get back out there now and hope that there's some more sets in the uh, 13 minutes that are remaining. Are you guys staying over at that uh, sports uh, facility again? No, no. Oh, no. okay. Not playing the, the paddle tennis. <laughs> paddle tennis this year. All right, cool. All right, look at Ben Player showing up, Shaggy. <laughs> Those two guys are good friends, and I think they travel a lot as well. Look at Amari, just intense. Oh, yeah, he loves it. Do we know he what he's listening to? Do you, do, do you uh, ever take a look at his I playlist? I know he does, doesn't mind a bit of Spanish rap. He could be rapping a bit of... <laughs> <laughs> bit of the Española Loca, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you can see everyone there, the French camp and the Aussie camp, just taking it all in. Yeah. Look at the reef. Uh, explain again what we're seeing here. Yeah, this is a really good shot because you can see the competitors out the back uh, sitting at the, tri the tip of the triangle where the waves are uh, breaking left and right. Kind of predominantly right today, you can see it breaking fr from the north, from the right to the left. Um, this, it's good, to this shot, because you can see, so if you wipe out at the back there, uh, and then the next wave catches there's a good chance you could end up on those rocks on the inside, which are really unforgiving. Yeah. And, you know, you see a lot of people um, come off uh, with cuts and bruises, and, you know, there's been worse injuries out here. I think we were, I think it was Dave Winchester. He was in here yesterday, and he says when it gets massive out there, uh, it's almost impossible to come back in onto the rock. So you have to paddle, you know, almost a mile down, yeah, down to the, the beach town. to a little village yep. and come in through their little port. Totally, yeah, yeah. If we get to see it big, it, it'll be a completely different uh, ball game out here. It's, it'll be really amazing to watch as, uh, as spec spectators. Uh, well, the swell forecast is looking really good. I think uh, we saw Tuesday was going to be one of the bigger one of the bigger days. Hopefully, we can get some some you know offshore winds to go with that. If that happens, I I don't I'm speechless. Again, take a look at the swell forecast. So. Right now we are on Wednesday, or we're Thursday, right? On Thursday, yeah. <laughs> yep. So it's looking, uh, it's saying there that it's similar to yesterday, but it's actually a little bigger today. It's had a bit of a bump. And it's looking similar for the next few days, maybe a little drop. And then you know, coming into Monday, Tuesday, that's, well, they're saying it's four foot today and there's nearly six foot set. So you can pretty much say that it's every day is going to be a bit bigger than what it's saying in this forecast. And if we say it, it just, if we see it eight to ten foot out here for our, for the final days, it's just going to be uh, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it, it's, gonna it's gonna. I'm a little worried because I gonna know be something you're not going to want to miss. <laughs> exactly, because I. That. It's going to be crazy. And <laughs> well, is it, does it follow the same same uh, respect as far as low tide? A lot more rights, high tide. We're going to well, see. Well, once it gets bigger, it's it becomes unride unrideable at low tide because it's just uh, it's just too shallow for yeah. the size for the amount of water that's. Draining Surging out on up. the reef, yeah, and it just it just becomes a gurgling, you know, unrideable square pit. So the contest coordinators, so so the um, <laughs> sorry, Ryan, <laughs> I'm speechless right now. I, I I'm keep thinking about the waves. Well, if we've they got get massive here, man. You've got Iram right, right, getting busy on the left. Quick flip. Still not going to uh, improve his score by too much. He's just work looking at on a. A total score of around 10, a couple of fives. That'll probably be around the same. So he's going to have to get out there and, you know, look really look for a bigger wave and a bigger, a bigger air section or a bigger barrel. 
And still we've got Edder in the lead on, on 12.75. Tamaga needing a 6.81 to, to beat him. Uh, but Tamaga did get a first yesterday, so a second here will see him into the into the man on man round. So he'd be he'd be feeling pretty good. But he's still got he's still got some work to do. Nine minutes left. And the other riders only need the six seven six and the seven six to, to pass both Tamaga and Edder. So there's time. There's nine minutes remaining in this heat. Heat number two of eight in round number two. So here we are. This is a uh, cool, very, uh, very, su we, we're supporting this as the IBA. This is called Wings for Life. And what it is, it's a spinal cord research foundation. And it, it is brought to you by Red Bull. So these guys are really behind it. We're going to get behind it. So if you'd like to know more about it and contribute, check out wingsforlife.com. And uh, that's where you're going to get all the details on this uh, pretty cool foundation. Well, that's, that's really re relevant to, to us here with bodyboarding because uh, bodyboarding and the, the twisting and, and flipping involved is just such a heavy thing on the spine. So um, yeah, anything, any sort of foundation we can support in relation to spine and, and spinal disease and problems, you know, it's yeah. a good thing. Wingsforlife.com. So there's another great shot of the reef. You can see that inside wave coming from the left side. That's that's a bit more west in the direction. Because the reef's just a blatant triangle, depending on whether the swell's coming from the right or from the left, determines if it's a right more of a predominant left or right-hand wave, which is just, uh, you couldn't al you almost couldn't create a, a better artificial reef than what we've got here at front time. We've got gas down the outside. Whoa! Nice tube. Is he going to come out of that? It looks like it's going to stay open. Yes! A little claim. <laughs> that's going to be one of the highest scoring waves of the heat. Uh, you only need the 676, so I dare say that wave could put him into first, Manny. I makes think him so. Very interesting. Gloomy Tamagul will now be in third, and he will be hungry as a rabid wolf <laughs> to get <laughs> for second. Let's take the details. So he's got a nice little wedge takeoff. It grew as he uh, drove down the line. Uh, we did s switch. We had uh, Ryder pull into that left barrel there, but it just it just shut down a little. So now it'll be all the riders will be uh, getting, b getting back out there to secure their priority seven minutes left and lots yeah we lots want to make sure we, we keep on the live action but again here is Gaston Trudeau yeah this is Gaston, Gaston seeing a nice clean line in the barrel two sections he's driven through there and even a third the, through the third last pocket comes out clean <laughs> yeah, waves to his little to his Portuguese mates on the shore and, and says yes thanks I'll take the lead 13.25 yeah, Gastel, the architect, architect from Portugal. He's um, he's a good guy on tour. Always a friendly guy. Uh, always keen, you know, to have a chat. And he's a good, good all-round rider. And he's got a, you know, great, great smooth style. Uh, he's quite capable in, in a lot of conditions. Um, he hasn't had great results this year. Uh, and I think that's why he had that arm up there. He, because yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's he hasn't had much luck in the in the leaderboard rounds. And if he can take off a win here, he'll be. Or, or a first place in this heat, he'll be stoked. That's right, man. Yeah, if you've had a, a series of losses or you know poor results, and then all of a sudden you, you start getting some great waves and you start getting through some rounds, it definitely it feels better almost than, than if you're already on a roll because you just you come back from the depths and and you're on, you know, you're charging through. And his man that, that doesn't mind getting a r on a roll, uh, current <laughs> world champ Amory Lavoon, looking good, looking fit as always. Uh, he's got a third yesterday, so he's definitely going to want to be focused for the second round. The second round is so important, especially if you've uh, got a third or fourth in that first round. A third or fourth here could see you know any rider knocked out of the of the top 16. Well, we've talked about it before. The leaderboard rounds is a series of three heats. Each competitor competes in three heats, and they will be awarded points for their placing. Again, first place is six points, second place is four, third is two points, and fourth place is one point. At the end of those three heats, those points will be tallied up and the top 16 will advance on. And throughout the year, we've noticed that the 10 point, it seems to be the bubble. So at the end of the second heat, you're going to have an idea of where you're going to sit and you don't want to sit anywhere near that 10 point bubble. Totally, man, yeah. I mean, the, the, the further you are past 10 points, the more comfortable you feel coming into that third round. Um, there's some more doing the, the walk down the rocks there. It's not it's not a, a pleasant walk. It's it's a pretty narrow trail and it, it's a total a sheer cliff drop on the other side of it. 
and then you get to the bottom and you got to look out at one of the heaviest body wooden waves there is. So it's, <laughs> yes. It's not a walk in the park out there, Manny. No. The little ledge is covered with little lava rocks too, so if you're not careful, you can uh, you know step on the wrong rock on your heel and that could hurt. Oh, totally, Manny. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Look at this. So uh, you see this left whitewash coming over the reef. So it looks like the whitewash wants to keep you onto the reef. So you know what? We want to keep you stay tuned. Keep watching. So we'll be back right after this. Back to the live action here in heat number two, round number two, out in the water, leading the charge from Portugal in the yellow jersey, Castel and Trudeau in the white, Eder Luciano in third, Guilherme Tamega, and in fourth, Ayram Cabrera in the blue jersey. So three minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Anything is still possible in this wave. That's right, man. It's, you can see it's a pretty tight he heat here, especially between uh, first and third. There's only uh, you know, there's less than two points in it. Tamagas, yeah, he's really going to want to get himself in first or second. And he's looking like in probably in second priority out there at the moment. Actually, no, he just had a wave, so he might. He's. he's have we got. Eder Luciano Ooh. taking a look at this one. Not much there for him, and he kicked out. That's all right. I think he may have just uh, used his priority for that wave, too. So that was a pretty crucial crucial move there. We've got two minutes 50 left. Uh, I think w what is. What you're really going to be watching here is uh, what Guilherme Tamaga is going to do in his last two and a half minutes. He needs third into first or second to qualify for the man-on-man -man round and keep his world title hopes alive. Oh, no. And he's going to need to get a 6-8-1 in this last two and a half minutes. So, really quick, can you explain to us the priority system for the viewers that don't understand it? Okay, well the priority system's uh, fairly basic. So four, four guys paddle out at the start, no one's got priority. And then as each rider gets a wave, uh, after that wave, they go to fourth priority, the, the first person who gets a wave. And then, so once it, each rider's had a wave, it then distinguishes an order mm -hmm. of who of who has uh, priority or choice at the waves coming. And then it basically just, just rolls on as the heat goes on. You know, as first priority will get his wave, and then he comes back out and he'll be in fourth priority. And second, we'll have to get his wave, come back out. He'll be then in fourth priority and so on. So you can use it as a strategy, or it could also backfire if you do go that route. So it is definitely some some technical things at, you know that are can be used in the competition as well. I mean, in this heavy, heavy waves, I think the guys are going to be re a little bit more respectful. But it is a contest. That's right, Manny. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a great, it's definitely a great system, though. Um, you'd see without priority out here in this kind of you know, triangle-shaped reef. There'd be a lot of confusion and a lot of hassling going on, you know, paddling over each other to try and get them on the inside to go either left or right. It'd be really confusing. So having the priority, um, you know, just enables you to focus on the wave a bit more, which is crucial out here where it's a, it's a heavy wave and, you know, um, not being the right spot at a takeoff can potentially be, a, you know, a, a big injury or you, know, you could blow a good wave. So the, the priority system's great and it definitely works out here at Fronton. Yeah. Perfect. Check this out. One minute remaining, and if nobody catches the wave, it looks like Gaustau and Trudeau will win this heat, heat number two in round number two. So it, uh, it's coming down to the wire right here. That's Eder right. Luciano in white, Guilherme Tamega in the red jersey, in third, Ayram Cabrera in and fourth. So we'll send you paddling. It could be something coming. It's going to eye on Guilherme Tamega there. 30, 30 seconds left. He's Needs a 6.81 to get oh into no. first or second and progress through the man and round round. We've got a wave here. Blue has priority, obviously. Uh, no, white has priority. Better Luciano. He needs a 6.26 to be first, but that's not going to happen. Wow, look how clear the water 15 is. 15 seconds left. There's, I think Galami might paddle for this wave just because there's, no there's nothing else out there. So, Adam Cabrera, he went for that wave. If he had priority, he would have lost it on that, right? That's right, yeah. Okay. Okay, so check this out. We got it. Um, you know what? Take a look at this. 